Last week as we were praising God and the wind was blowing, I had several people from the congregation, some that are sitting way back, came up and they testified at different times. I felt the wind. Anytime you tell me that you felt one of the manifestations of God, I always ask you to explain it. Prove all things. See if we're talking about the same thing. And it never fails. They give the exact same description. Because it's the exact same God. I feel a virtue. Now, when I said that, that means somebody is agreeing with me. And the, the virtues never lie. The virtue is the Holy Ghost in action. One day we were taking service, and I, mean, I think that sometimes people, and I don't mind, you try the spirit, and I don't mind. We take offering, and I say, I feel virtue. Maybe some people want to see what happens. Well, last week, I felt virtue, but we just missed. But I still said, well, we just missed, but I still feel virtue. I didn't take it back. We're closing down the books, closing up everything. And the folks came in after service and said, hey, I got an offering to give. Amen. Amen. God don't lie. Amen. You see, I feel virtue. So, <clears throat> let us put aside our ignorance. Let's put aside <clears throat> uh, our own selves and let's let God have his way. And let's just willfully, <clears throat> submissively look at the word of God that we may be edified. And, and let God speak to us. We are living in the last days and things will not get better. We have all type of things up there. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. <clears throat> now in the days of Noah, fallen angels came forth and went into the daughters of men. Not to say that we may see that, but these angels were severely punished. However, as it was in the days of Noah, so it is today we have an extremely amount of demonic activity. And the devil uses different tactics. Now this is a familiar scripture, but let's look at it one more time for a few minutes as we read in 1 Timothy chapter 4. Let's understand some of the tactics of the enemy. Apostle Paul said, let us not be ignorant of Satan's devices and many tricks that he has and he tries to use upon mankind. And, and this is one of the main ways in which the devil is moving today. And, 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 and this is very important. We've read the scripture many times, but let's just take our time and break it down. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, is that what I said? And now I want to read in verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4, and may the Holy Ghost anoint the word that we all may be fed. And may he open our understanding that we may understand the scriptures. This message is not long. Read it, please, sir. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time. Because the Spirit of God knows all things. A man, he can see the past, the present, and the future. The Holy Ghost comes to guide us into all truth. Amen. It is by way of the Holy Spirit that men prophesy. And they get an understanding of the things of God. And the Holy Ghost, he even prays for us because we don't know how to pray as we ought. He searches our hearts that we may be purged. And then he warns us and he looks up for us. In the book of Acts, there was a prophet named Agabus. Agabus, and he came and he prophesied. He said there's going to come a famine in the land. And because he was known to be a true far prophet, they began to send relief to all the poor churches and to prepare themselves. And sure enough, the famine came, but the church was prepared because the Holy Ghost spoke. God said that he would do nothing first except he would reveal it to his prophets, his servants. So then the Spirit of God warns us, just like he warned some of you all and you didn't know that it was him. Until after the fact, and then you might have said to yourself, I felt that I should not have said that, or I felt that I should not have done that, or something told me not to, but you didn't understand it. So then you need to learn to understand how God works with you. And there are stages of understanding how he works with you. 
Everybody doesn't always recognize the voice of God. But God will use your emotions and your senses to deal with you. <clears throat> At times you may feel a certain way and then a thought may come. And you may not act on it, but that thought comes to pass. It may happen a couple more times. You feel a certain way and a thought comes and this thing comes to pass. Now you know that God is trying to get your attention in a way in which you can understand. So the next time you have that certain feeling, you can speak it. Because you can honestly say God spoke to me. Though you didn't necessarily hear the small still voice, he's speaking to you through the spirit in a way in which you can understand. I feel a virtue. So he does this to teach you how to yield to him. He uses several things upon each individual according to how sensitive they are to get that understanding. It may be the last dream you have when you wake up always comes to pass. So you may dream a lot of dreams and it never fails, but that last dream you had when you woke up, it seemed like it always happened. Now you see God is trying to train you. But as you grow in grace, you can walk and you can hear that small still voice. It's like you graduate and you become more sensitive. Your insight is opened, and you can understand more of how God works and how he moves. Not only this time do you dream a dream, but you can also interpret a dream. You don't necessarily have to have that feeling, but you can hear that voice. As you grow in grace, according to every man's ability, but you have to know how God talks to you. And he said that if any man, that means man or woman, lack wisdom, let him ask God. And God will give to anyone the understanding on a level whereby they can what? Understand. Now, the spirit, you see, let me slow down. I'm not going to do this for you anymore. What it hurts my heart with ministries everywhere, those who claim to have the truth and whatever, we, and the saints of God, we live a life in Christ as though Christ is not alive. Oh, yes. So many times we engage in folly, not realizing that the Holy Ghost is supposed to be in us. Are oh, you hearing me? Yeah. Many times we put other things first, and our spirituality drops to the ground, and we just walk around like it's all right, as though God is not looking. We make decisions, and we do this, and we do that, and not one time, sometimes, do we ever take time out to say, Lord, do you agree? It's because we're so used to walking in the breath that he gave that we forget that he gave it. We're so used to waking up in the morning and taking life for granted that we fail to say, let your will be done and not mine. I just want to awaken our conscience and please, I beseech you, brothers and sisters, know that Jesus really does live. He's alive. The grave is empty. They can't change that. He's alive. And he's coming back. You must live your life with the understanding that God is real. And you have to answer. And this is why we must be sure of ourselves. And he left us evidence, his word. Now, the spirit, let's see how true this is, speaketh expressively that in the latter times, read, some shall depart from the faith. Now, Paul is speaking of latter times. It may have been brewing, but it hadn't came out as such yet, but it's on its way. This departure is coming. In the latter times, in the latter days, in the latter times, some will become apostate, will depart from the faith. Read it. Giving heed to seducing spirits. Giving heed. Not just hearing, but paying attention to it. Receiving, seducing, deceiving spirits. That word seducing. 
as one who is setting a trap. They will depart from the faith by listening and giving themselves to spirits that will deceive them, entrap them, fool them, and what? And doctrines of devils. Which prepare them to be taught by teachings. The word doctrine is teaching of what? Devils. Devils. Now this is very important. This is a, a way in which Satan is working today. We don't always want to look at, we look at all a lot of the ungodly lifestyles, demon possession, but this is one we don't need to overlook. And that is whispers, teachings, ideas, deceptions, doctrines that come directly from demons. Holy Ghost came talking, devils come talking to him. But now, you know what the catch of this is? It says that in the latter times, some shall depart from the what? From the faith. That's only one of our one faith. Mm -hmm. Giving heed. They shall depart from the apostle doctrine, the teachings of Christ, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now you might say, well, Mr. what are some people about that? Many shall depart, turn their backs on the faith. Where did you find those of the faith? You find them in the congregation. Uh -huh. You find them in the quote unquote church. You find them amongst the believers. In the latter days, demons will come in our midst. You feel me? And they will cause people to depart from the very truth. They're going to attack people who have the truth. And they will try your spirit to see if you're rooted and grounded. And many will be found wanting and will be deceived. And they will depart, become apostate, never to return from the faith. And they may give all type of excuses as to why they fell away. But the scripture says in a lot of cases, demons deceive you and you fell for it. Seducing, deceiving spirit. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, when you get upset, and you've seen it, backsliders, and some of you sitting here that are insiders that are backsliders, but when you get upset, the first thing you start hearing is those desiring seeing is how to find fault in what you've been taught. That's a fact with all of us. You're trying to find a hole. That's right. Why? Because now you're dealing with a seducing spirit. That is, if you have truth. You're dealing with a seducing spirit and a doctrine of devils. And if, it, and if where you're at, if the doctrine is so sound and you can't find a hole in it, you just have to get upset and depart. Or you will remain searching, trying to find a breach in the wall. And when you think about it, doctrines of devils and all these writings and uh, erroneous writings and false gospels and things that we had, a lot of them had been written in. These teachings come from demons. You call yourself, you're praying, I feel the Holy Spirit, and you're reading, you're reading books, and you're reading this, and you're reading that. And you don't have a foundation of the evidence, which is the scriptures. And the spirit says, boy, that makes sense. And lead you straight away. Like I've said before, I, I study. I feel the virtue. Not, as a matter of fact, not, not just, uh, it wasn't long ago, a, a, a gentleman friend called me and wanted me to reread the Apocrypha. So I read the second book of Esther. I said, I read the whole thing. Then I went on and read the Gospel of Thomas and the Gospel of Philip, and I listened to the entire book of Enoch. And I said to myself, Lord, huh, this is a close friend of mine. I said, I'm going to read. I've read these materials before, the Gospel of Mary and the Tachi and the, the Hadith. And all. You know, this is what I do. But I have a foundation. You don't have to read none of that stuff, and you still got truth. 
You got to have a solid foundation. If you don't, you'll be led astray. Because all of it sounds, oh, it sounds just like scripture. A lot of these books of scripture was written beforehand. They had it to pull from. And the second book of Esther sounded, it sounded good. It had a lot of things that sounded Bible. But you got to know what you're listening for. When he mentioned the angel Uriel, I didn't have to read it no more. I knew it was false. It knew it was false. The book of Daniel was a proven book. The historical evidence in it is proven. And the book of Daniel said that there are only two angels that God has given control over the people of God. Gabriel and Michael. Amen. You're out. You done crossed the line. Amen. God didn't give you charge of the people of God. Yes, he gave it to Michael and Gabriel. Why do you think that it was Gabriel that appeared to Daniel? And then you find out it was Michael that stood up and fought. And, and in Revelation, you see Michael fighting the, the, the demons and the angels, the, the devils of Satan. And you find it was Gabriel who came to Zachariah and Elizabeth. It was Gabriel who came to Mary and Joseph. Why? Because God said, Gabriel said to Mike, to, to, to Daniel, there's no one else with me in this except Michael. All other angels come behind them. Their names are not important. They're under their honor. And the last trumpet would sound when Christ comes back with the voice of the archangel and the cry of command would mean. The Bible said it. The angels in the water, the soldiers of heaven came forth. Michael and his angels fall. No other angel's name was needed. They all fall under Michael. So when he mentioned Uriel, I didn't even have to finish reading. What? Because I'm solid. I'm grounded in the word. I knew it was false. I knew it was a doctrine of death. But I read all of this, right? The book of Daniel, God told Daniel to seal the book up. After he showed him the time of the end, he said, this is not until the time of the end. He showed Daniel the mysteries of the beast, and the fourth beast, how terrible it was. And when I got to reading, then the guy said, because it sounded like there's a prophet, then he said, and Uriel gave to me the understanding. He gave to me the understanding of the book that not even Daniel received about the fourth beef. I say, listen to this lying demon. Lying devil. Daniel received the revelation. And guess what else? Daniel was told by the Almighty to seal the book. You real high, you get in. False. False. And you got some preachers that read this stuff and then they quote it as scripture. Doctrine of devils. False. All the way false. The Gospel of Philip. Oh, it sounds so smooth, so light. And it says, and Mary Magdalene is Jesus' lover. That's where that came from. False. The Gospel of Thomas and Philip. Adam had an evil heart. False. Adam's heart wasn't evil. It was a woman that was in the transgression, not the man. And then they say, Speak to the womb of a woman. Speak in a womb of a woman can't tell you nothing. God doesn't use the womb of a woman to give a message as such. You suffer virgins of being with child. You have to listen to this stuff. These were not written by the names of the men that they called by. And history proves that. And everybody wants to get in a hissy fit. Oh, these are ordained of God. No, no, no. They're seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And the Lord. Many of these hidden books as the lost books of Eden. An east wind came and it blew away the serpent. Took the serpent out of the garden and blew him all the way to India. Well, Lord, help the Indians. <laughs> and, and, and in the lost books of Eden. And Adam's second wife, Lily. My dad used to always say Adam had another wife, Lily. I didn't know he read the books. He had a second wife named Lily. All right. All right, Lily. Lost books of Eden. And the serpent made love to eat. Therefore, that's how Cain came about. The serpent seed doctrine. Seducing spirits. But these demons are so slick. Let me tell you, please, that some people are going to declare them, like, watch this. These are actual demons 
demonic teaching, and people would declare them as the teachings of God. You see how serious that is? These spirits, they focus on church folk. These spirits are out for the virtue. Many shall depart from the depart from the these spirits focus on church folk. Got a new revelation. Got a new insight. Let's find a hold in the scriptures. These spirits focus on believers. Believe me. God going to allow you to be tried to see how much you believe. That's what the Bible says. Take heed to yourself. Examine yourself to see whether you be in the or not. Because some people stand but not as they not as they are. And they will be speaking lies, what preacher? In hypocrisy. In other words, the stories are not going to add up. There's going to be hypocrisy all over the place. I was talking to a, a friend, and he was saying, but the book of Enoch, you know, it's got to got through, it's got the different demons in there, and Raphael, and Uriel, and, and, and it talks about the, the seed and the children of the angel, and it had some things in it that you find written, and it, this and that. And you know, I just believe, I just believe in Enoch, and then I realized, God bless my friend, he thought Enoch wrote it. That's why he said he kept believing, because he thought Enoch. I said, brother, he said, yeah. I said, you know, he's not been like that. He didn't. That book came some 200 years after <laughs> Malachi was closed down after the Old Testament. That came between the Testament. He said, I said, no. You know, pseudology. They would write books and they would give fake names like authors do today. They don't give it a real name. A lot of actors do that. They come up under other names. I said, a lot of these books were written, and the writers just put the names on there. But he didn't write that. He said, oh. And then we went to break it down and show things that were contrary. But if you don't know, if you're not under a solid foundation, come on, come on. you will fall for these demons. Yes. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Some of y'all might have had to... Read the whole book of Esther. But when I got to that one word, Uriel, I could have put it down because I knew there would be some more errors in it. Then he started putting down Dan. I could have put it down right there and then because I knew better. One scripture. I knew better. I knew what the scripture said. You understand? The book of Maccabees is First Maccabees is pretty good. I believe that Daniel spoke of the Maccabees, not as necessarily chosen, but those who will withstand the Greek and the Alphys Epiphanes. Uh, he will come to try to defile the, the temple, the abomination of desolation spoken by the prophet Daniel. A lot of times these things take place uh, in the past to let you know it's going to take place in the future. And, and the Alphys Epiphanes, Daniel said that the people of God would do exploits in those days. They would put up a good battle. He went around trying to put a statue of Zeus or something like that in the temple, wanted to sacrifice a pig and what have you. And he sent his soldiers to one particular city and they looked at an old man and said, listen, you old priest, you come on and you make the sacrifice and the people will be all right. He picked the wrong priest. He picked John Maccabees. And John Maccabees looked at him and took him out. And his sons followed him. And that's how the Maccabean revolt came about. And they fought, and they fought hard. That's where the Jewish religion Hanukkah came from. As a matter of fact, if I'm correct, the Feast of Life. The Hanukkah entered into the scriptures, but not as one of the celebrations that God ordained. It was a celebration of tradition. If I'm correct, John the Baptist's father was performing in the, the dedication of lights, which if I'm correct, was Hanukkah. He was lighting the candles when he saw the angel. It entered into that custom, but not as one of the major ordained feasts as the Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacle, or the Day of Atonement. But uh, they fought, and they fought, and they fought, and the temple ran, and the candles ran out of all, but they kept burning for eight days when they should not have. That's why it's eight days. Thus, Hanukkah came about, and it was a great victory, but it didn't last long. Some of the other Jews turned on the Maccabeans, and it didn't last long, and they came down. 
Now, well, why did that make the Bible? Because they, was, they were not ordained of God to succeed. Because the Greeks were coming forth, and Daniel prophesied that that leopard with wings would go swiftly and take over the world. That's why they had to come down. Because they had already been uh, labeled as rebellious. So there was no major prophet during that time. No prophecy during that time. They were only going through something that a prophet had spoke about. But they could not excel. And they didn't. The Greeks took over. That was the end of that. And then the Romans came in. But the Hanukkah celebration crept in. Just like the Purim in the book of Esther it was not a God-ordained celebration, but it was a Jewish tradition. They also let that come in. But Hanukkah is in the scriptures, but not as an ordained tradition of God, but as a tradition of the Jews, which really took place, showing the customs of the day. But the Maccabeans were not ordained to excel. They were not prophetic. And they weren't chosen as the prophets were. But the event was prophesied about that the conflict would happen. You understand what I'm saying? But you gotta know these things. Because you don't want to call gospel what's not. You don't want to call scriptures of God what is not. Then it's evident either you don't know or you've been led by one of these southern in. Seducing spirits and teachings of what? Notice that's proof. Teachings of devils. Every teaching that comes in the church that is not right and people stand on it, my God. These spirits attack the congregation. I feel the virtue. When you sit up all night long trying to find fault in it, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their what? Having their conscience seared. That's like welding two irons together and it becomes one. You don't want to have your mind locked in, closed out, your mind made up, and you got false doctrine of that. Amen. You done got locked into your heart and mind a, a seducing spirit and a doctrine of devils, and you ain't listening. See, these spirits come in, they try to deceive you, set a trap, and uh, get you to follow them and deceive you, and they're putting you teachings contrary to God's word, and then they try to get you to lock it in. Then they got you. You can't see, you can't understand. Because you have just allowed a demon to lock in your mind. Doctors of devils. Okay, okay, let's see here. Read. Forbidding to marry. He says, now, one of these teachings is a doctrine of devils. Forbidding to devils. In teaching, so-called Christian or whatever, that teaches you to forbid to marry, according to the scripture, is a doctrine of what? Devils. Call it any way you want. You know? We'd be nice to folk. So one of the false teachings of devils is forbidding to marry. We see that everywhere. Is that not right? That's right. The Romans took it and spread it in big time. They even changed the word of marriage to models gamos, which doesn't even exist. It's not even a biblical word. In the Old Testament, the word marriage is ona. It means a nuptial agreement, a union. In the New Testament, the word for marriage is gamos. It simply means marriage. There are no different types of marriage in the Bible, just marriage between male and female. There is no polygamy. Uh, a man with more than one wife, two or more. There is no, uh, there is no polygamy. That, that, that's the man with two or more wives. There's no, no polygamy. That's people marriage, a polyamory, couple marriages. There's no polandry, a woman with more than one husband. There is no monogamy, one partner for a lifetime. None of these are scriptural terms. But through paganism, idolatry, and the Roman Catholicism, they change. They, you've seen all the scandals that the priests have been going through. That's right. The billions of dollars that they had to pay out in suitcases. And I said to myself, my heart goes out for the priests because they have been taught a doctrine of devils. 
forbidding to marry, for they burn in their lust. I feel the virtue. The family structure has been destroyed. The image of God has been knocked down. The church and the church rises up. And you hear preachers preaching uh, as divine plan of God, monogamy. Understand what I'm saying? As a divine plan of God. Not knowing that they're teaching the doctrine of devils and a word that does not even exist in the scriptures. The word monogamy comes from two words. Monos, gamos. Monos means only, separate, alone, by itself. Gamos means marriage. A long marriage, separate by itself. And through Romanism, the Romans came. Nobody ever heard of such a word, such a teaching, until Rome came about. And they began to promote it, though they could have mistress and fornicate all night long. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? And one day I was sitting down at my desk, and I just so happened to look at the Lord. Oh. And I saw the word monos. So I went to a Webster dictionary. One in detail. And I looked up marriage. And I looked up monogamy. And it gave it to me. Monos, gamos, a combined word of two Greek words. New Testament written in Greek. I went to the scriptures to see if I may find the word monos. And I found it. All through the Bible. It's all in there. Monos, monos, monos. And I looked for gamos, marriage. It's all in the Bible. Gamos. I said, okay, both of these words are in the scriptures, you know, in the original language, correct? You hear me, preacher? I said, so now, if any of you, any of you know about looking up the concordance and what have you, it's in alphabetical order. That's right. So I said, let me go to the M's and now let me find Monos Gamblers. Now, in English, what is Monos Gamblers? Monogamy. This is what these preachers are preaching as divine marriage. Monogamy. Which eliminates the marital plan that God has in Scripture. Monogamy says that a man is bound to the law of his wife as long as she lives. That if he be married to another, he shall be called an adulterer. That is blasphemy. Amen. That's not what the Scripture said. It said a woman is bound to the law of her husband Amen. as long as he lives. Amen. Speaking of natural situations. Now listen. When I looked it up, models this, models that. Monos this. I went all the way down the list. I'm sorry, guess what was it in there? What's that? Monos Gambles. Oh my God. What these preachers are calling God of divine order is not even a word created by the Holy Spirit. It's not even a biblical word. Doctrine of devils. Amen. The Bible teaches marriage. Hebrew says marriage is honorable in all manner, mm -hmm. meaning pertaining to the scripture. But now who among us is fornicated God will what? Judge. He will judge. Ain't no girlfriend. Ain't no boyfriend. Ain't no lovers on the side. Amen. Anybody hearing me? Amen. Ain't no sweethearts. Doctrines of devils. Preach it like it is. And then he said what else? And commanding to abstain from meats which God have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Now he didn't say and abstain from eating meat. If you don't want to eat meat, that's fine. But when you command and teach that it's a sin to eat meat and that it's against the scriptures to eat meat, you're teaching the doctrine of devils. Straight up, straight down. For every creature of God is what? Good. And nothing to be Refused. This will be received as given. It was like that from the beginning. Didn't the Bible say everything God created was good? Amen. But he gave them certain laws for certain reasons. And when they served their purpose, amen, then he gave them insight to continue on. He had them not connect two types of war. Or, or you could eat this and don't eat that. They had his reasons for it. But what he was trying to do was teaching them on the outside to be separate from the rest of the world. Teaching them in, in outward habits not to be like the nation. But once Christ came and gave his life, he made in one body, he made, he brought twain to become one. In other words, Gentile and Jew now are one in Christ. There is no separation. 
That's why when Cornelius the Gentile was on his way to Peter's house, God gave Peter a dream of a four-footed beast and everything God said, don't eat. Peter said, Lord, I've never ate anything uncommon or unclean. And God said, don't you call what I've cleansed. In other words, he was showing Peter that teaching served his purpose. And when he got to understanding, here comes the Gentiles. And when Peter talked, he said, you know, we've been a Jew. Jews don't fellowship with unclean and uncommon Gentiles. He said he understood it. But God told me what I've cleaned. Don't call clean and uncommon, uncommon and unclean. He understood it. And he preached to them the gospel. And even Paul came. When Peter and Barnabas were eating with the Gentiles and the Jews came from Jerusalem, they separated themselves. Paul rebuked them, man, what are you doing? You called Barnabas to stop. To stop. You sent them back eating with the Gentiles and the Jews came, you separated. In other words, don't you know God has cleansed it? And now Paul is saying, being a Jew himself, understanding all things. Anybody that commands and teaches you that you cannot eat, Romans 14 says, number one, now don't get me wrong. If some of you just, I just, in my spirit, I, I'm convicted I can't eat meat, that's no problem. As long as you don't condemn others, but you got to know one thing. Somebody say, what's that? What's that? You weaken the faith, but we still love you. It's all right. Because you have to answer to God for yourself. He that cannot eat meat is weak in the faith. Who cannot eat it? If you choose not to, God bless you. You know, for health purposes, ain't nothing wrong with it. There's a truth to all of that. Some things you shouldn't eat, you know. You know but, but you, when you say it's a sin to eat it, now you're teaching a doctrine of devils. So now you see that when he says doctrine of devils, he's actually talking about teachings that are false. Teachings that are false come from demons. And these spirits attack the church. You know, understand what I'm saying? They're looking for you. They got the world. Many false prophets shall deceive many. But many shall depart from the faith when they come in and witch you. came in with her. Who are all the people that came in with him? I didn't see nobody. Maybe I'm living in the spirit. They so look strange. Seems like a whole bunch of folk whispering at him. I don't know what you're doing. You said you can't. You got something to do with this. That doesn't make no sense. You better go. You better go. That doesn't make no sense. I feel what you're talking about. You don't need a big thing. Ah. Somebody say, well, what should I say, Bishop? What should I say, Bishop? Get behind me, Satan! Yeah. Get behind me! Yeah. Ah! My sheep know my voice! And the voice of a stranger they will flee from! Beware what's whispering in your ear! Beware of what spirit is moving upon you as though your God doesn't see it as though he doesn't hear it. So why did that happen? Because we're going to sit back and see each other. To see if you approve him. And when you make your stand, then he comes in and strengthens you more. Every creature of God. It says this, for God has created to be received with what? Thanksgiving. Of what? Thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put it says this, God has created them to be received with thanksgiving of them which what? Verse 3. Believe and what? Not know the truth, but believe and know the truth. You see? But I believe it and I know it. When you believe it and you know it, can't no devil deceive you. This is why it's important to believe and know the truth. And it says, preacher what? For every what? For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. And if you believe and know the truth, then you're going to know that what I'm saying here is real. I ain't taking nothing out. I ain't adding nothing to it. Get mad, do what you want to do. They, 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 it's calling on two of these doctrines right now. Forbidden to marry and abstaining, commanding to abstain from eating meat. Doctrine of devils. Hindu, doctrine of devils. Buddhist, doctrine of devils. Catholic, doctrine of devils. A lot of so called Christian churches, doctrines of devils. Because they teach these things. Folks that baptize in Jesus' name, some of them doctrine of devils. Because they teach these things. Yeah. 
For it is sanctified by the word of God and what? For the word of God and prayer. Well, maybe, maybe some of y'all shouldn't eat because some of y'all ain't praying. <laughs> you praying can't even clear food. Because you ain't praying. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't eat. Anybody hear me? Prayer is powerful. Amen. That word of God sanctifies. Because listen, when you preach in the gospel, you have to preach it universal. You may tell some folk, oh, you don't, listen, if you're going to hell, you're eating that rat. But there are some countries in Asia that eat rats. Not rats in the city, they eat the rats in the field that eat off of, 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 of vegetation. They are healthy. You telling me they're going to hell? And that's all they have to eat, and it's healthy. They know what to eat and what not. So your gospel has to, for instance, a lot of the missionaries now, when they go overseas and they see different cultures with more than one wife, a lot of them now are baptizing the whole family. But you see, this is what's so strange. When they go over there, they baptize the whole family. Many of them are now. But when they come over here, they tell folk you're going to hell. Having an iron field, an the, the, the iron seared full of hypocrisy. How come God is different over there? The gospel that we preach, I never change it, son. I don't change it. Some people came to me from Africa and they said, Bishop, we want to get married, but uh, we have dowries here. Is that acceptable? I said, yes, sir. Your dowry is acceptable. Well, when we get money later on, we'll go to the government. I said, I understand that. This is you, you, you've been engaged and you're ready to be man and wife. Yes, sir. Your dowry, and you come, you know, dad and mama out. You come bring your payment, your dowry before the elders, and you present it. Because it's by you. Got to change it. That's why they receive it so well. They say, you don't think like a Western. No, I think like the scriptures. And as I was sitting down, two couples came to me and they said, Bishop, we want to talk to you about marriage because there, I'm like the council. They said, what is it? <laughs> Bless their hearts. We want to swap wives. You want to do what? Yeah, we, we, we want to swap wives, Bishop. We all agree. And I said, well, that's really nice, but you can't do that. <laughs> oh, no. I said, no, sir. <laughs> no, sir. No polyamory. No group marriage. And you can't swap wives like that. Because you figured it. They took it. We already did. So you gotta give back. <laughs> you gotta give them back, bro. You can't do that. But they came and they were sincere. You see? But I stuck with the scriptures. You see? The scriptures are good for everyone. Amen. And let's finish it. Verse 6 says what? If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith, and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profit little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. If you can't get down to the gym, you can't get that way out like you want to, keep practicing godliness, you still be all right. You still be all right. So don't beat yourself up if you can't exercise like you want. Just make sure you exercise godliness. Amen. It profits all things. And this life and the life to come. Read. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. That's what I'm doing. I'm commanding and teaching that in the latter days, the days, the Spirit said that some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I'm telling you to take heed to what you hear and what you listen. And know that false doctrine comes from demonic spirits. Church, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap offering. But what I'm trying to really emphasize to you people is God has done you no wrong. Trust in him. He's alive. Don't walk around as though Jesus is dead because he's not. You have to answer to him. Someone does you wrong and bruises you greatly. 
You rise up in vengeance. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I understand the pain, but you cannot just act without realizing you got to answer to a God that's alive. Help us, Lord, to live as though we know and understand that you're right here, that you see us, that you watch us. Help us, Lord, because we shall be judged according to every deed done in the body, whether it be good or bad. Help us. Help us. As the young Joseph said to Potiphar's wife, she said nobody's home. He said, but I dare you to She said, the captain's not here. The servants are not here. The brother, the young Joseph said, God sees. God sees me. Anybody feel the weight of that or do you all think he's dead? I feel the weight of it. Not only does he see me, but he hears me. Spirits that deceive. The scriptures can speak for themselves. Anytime you read the scriptures and you see it stating something, but then you say, I don't believe that, but that don't mean that, Lord, have mercy. Be careful. Be careful. Because these scriptures would outlive us. They've been around for a long time. And God has bear witness to them. Is this not true? Are they not teaching this today? In a great way. Societies have taken upon these doctrines. People are dying in the country because they think cows are gods. All they got to do is take one and barbecue it. But they won't. And then people are dying in food everywhere because of the doctrine of them. Societies are being destroyed because of doctrine of demonic marital doctrines. As the scriptures have said, this is not true. People are departing from the faith. False teachings, and they say, man, I can't deal with this. But they're not really walking away from the truth. They never had it. False doctrine. But it's causing damage. But to them that love God and are called according to his purpose, they're going to hold fast. He that endure it to the end, the same shall be what? Endure it to the end, Peter. But refuse profane and old wise faith and exercise thyself unto God. Refuse foolishness. If I want to debate you about what the Bible says about the Holy Trinity, well, son, you're going to have to find somebody else to do that. The Bible don't say nothing about it. Can't use the Bible. One young man said, Bishop, I want to debate you about women pastors and bishops. I said, well, son, we can't do that. Not with the Bible. Why is that? Because the Bible don't talk about that. You want to talk about women in the ministry? You want to talk about the Godhead? Okay. But what you're talking about, we're going to get outside the Bible. Because it doesn't come. It doesn't say that. Well, I want to say, I want to debate and show you in the Bible where there's a free rapper. Well, baby, we can't use the Bible for that. Because it's not in there. We're going to end up adding to the scriptures, making up stuff, so poems in it, using crazy illustrations. Because it's not scripture. Anybody understand what I'm saying? Amen. And, and listen, some of these other books that I named, you ain't even never got to look at them. You ain't lost nothing. Because we have enough. We have the Holy Spirit. Y'all hear me? As a matter of fact, leave them alone. If you ain't trying to be a scholar or trying to get into these things, leave it alone. You end up, end up being nothing but being confused. 
Sometimes people send me clips to look at, and I look at them. One same song sent me something that they thought might have been interesting. So the guy said he's a prophet. He's 50, he's a prophet. I think he was cursing America, talking about the black Hebrew. He's a prophet, Caucasian okay, guy. And then he says, I'm only, I'm nobody, but I'm gonna tell it like it is. So you be blessed, be blessed by Jehovah, be blessed by Yah, be blessed by Yahweh, be blessed by Allah, as they do God Almighty. <laughs> Just gotta listen. And by the way, I listened to another one, they told me this too, how that the 400 years of the Jews going into captivity, they said it wasn't them, they, we can't find 400 years. There's only one group of people, and they said because we can't find from 400 years, they could not have been the children of Israel. That's what he said. Could not have been. So there's only one group of people. Now he said because they couldn't trace 400 years, they could not be. That's what he said. He's based on the fact they couldn't claim 400 years, so it could not be children of Israel. The only people that for 400 years in slavery is American people. He said, I'm a mother, do that. Just for y'all to know, American slavery lasted for approximately 246 years. It ended at domestication. The 13 of them ended it. So according to his teaching, the show can't be us as a nation. Maybe some of that all. Well, you weren't enslaved for 400 years. And this new bill that they're signing now, it says that it is representing the 400 years we have been in this country. Not 400 years of slavery, but 400 years of being in America. You see, we've only been free for about 146 years. And in the book of Genesis, it says when the children of God come out, they're gonna come out with abundance. We came out of slavery, but it's over with abundance. God help us. That was abundance. And then we ran right into segregation. Trying to get equal rights. So you got all these people talking about 400 years of slavery. And we ain't been slaves 400 years. You got to listen, people. The Bible is real. You see? The Bible is real. It, it means what it says. So let's. Sometimes people beat away at their own foundation, not realizing they're about to fall to. The whole world is upheld by the pillars of his word. If something went wrong with his word, everything would come down. But thank God he doesn't base it on us, ain't that? Church, say praise the Lord. If you want to doubt God's word, then I want you to do one simple test first, and then we'll talk about it. If you can prove this wrong, this simple, just a simple, just a simple thing God did. If you can prove wrong from death we come, death we return. The evening and the morning is the first day. That's a seven day week based on creation. If you can prove all that wrong, then maybe I'll begin to listen to you when you say there's something wrong with God. This is a simple thing. If you can't prove it wrong, ain't no sense in discussing any fault you think you find in God. You can't even prove wrong this something. Thing. That's the first chapter of the book. If you can't prove that wrong, how you gonna prove something? Else? Please. Your understanding is unfruitful. And when you get ready to die and go back to dust, I want you to still say, ain't no God. But you sure won't find out for sure. Church say praise the Lord. Precious God, we thank you. We appreciate you. Help us to understand when we come together, we're not alone in all of this. Not only is the Holy Spirit here, but demons that come to try our faith. But we're not afraid. The greatest he that is in us, that he that is in the world. Give us an ear to hear. Only what the Spirit has to say to the church. Believe not every spirit, but try the Spirit, whether they real God. 
Help us to take heed to false doctrine and the teachings of devils that will cause men to depart from the faith. We thank you, Lord. We love you. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable. How can we criticize our freedom? He knows how to sustain his word and keep it. And he can hold the stars in place. My God, he can make sure we know what's right. Keep alive. I want to be pleasing. I want to stay. Hey.